Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing DraftKings stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. DraftKings started in 2012. They currently have 8 million users. The company allows customers to bet on fantasy sport leagues, professional sports, and non-professional sports. Also, you can wager on individual player performances. The company hosts many different sports, including baseball, football, golf, tennis, and many more. In 2018, the company became the first legal mobile sports betting operator in New Jersey. Since then, it has expanded into other states. In 2020, Michael Jordan became an investor and board advisor for the company. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 21 billion market cap. They're trading at $53 a share and they have 392 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow and it seems to be getting worse each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also negative and getting worse each year. Revenue is a sales for the company and that's growing at a pretty good rate. It more than doubles from 2017 to the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Then the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. The company does have positive gross profit each year. It's pretty consistent. Then below that is operating expenses. And you can see they have negative operating income every year. And it seems to be getting worse. This does not necessarily indicate the company's doing a bad job. They're just trying to grow their business. So they have to invest a lot into it to grow it. The company has a little debt, so they have a small interest payment on their debt. And then there's pre-tax income. Then below that is taxes. Earnings from equity interest are the earnings from their investments into other businesses. The bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And you can see that was the worst in the trailing 12 months, negative $600 million. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business and that's negative each year. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow, and that's negative every year. Since the company's not generating any cash, it needs money from somewhere to run its business. So it issued 118 million of capital stock in 2017, 141 million in 2018, and 1.3 billion in the trailing 12 months. It also has issued some debt, 71 million in 2019 and 112 million in the trailing 12 months. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow at some point, you don't have much of a business because you cannot rely on debt and equity financing to run your business in the long term. This business is growing, so they're investing a lot back into their business. That's why they have negative operating cash flow. The idea is to invest heavily in your business in the early years and then grow it to become profitable in later years. That's obviously a lot easier said than done, but many companies have done that, but many more companies have not done that. So as an investor, it's your decision to figure out whether they'll be able to make a profit, or you may just be a short-term investor looking to get in and out to make a quick profit. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income that was negative 600 million. Then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. They passed through $54 million of depreciation. They also passed through $185 million of stock-based compensation. Companies that are looking to grow sometimes pay employees partly with stock because they want to conserve cash so they can invest it back into the business instead of using it for payroll. They also had a positive $109 million of working capital. So even though they had negative $600 million of income, they actually only lost $250 million. Let's look at a capital structure negative $300 million of equity. That means their liabilities are $300 million more than their assets and $75 million of debt. 
but they have negative one million of net debt, which means they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have one million left over. Their WAC is 7.8%, which is a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 18 million. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $13 billion. We divide that by 392 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $34. They're trading at $53, so they're trading at a 54% premium. It's a sell according to the model. I'm really close to Simply Wall Street. They're at $36 a share. They're also saying the stock is overvalued. I was able to calculate their future free cash flow based off of analyst estimates. When a company's not generating any cash, the reason a stock may go up is because the investors feel the future of the company will generate cash. So if you buy the stock and investors feel the stock will go up and they push the price higher, you could sell and make money. If the stock price crashed, you'd be really happy that you got in and made a profit before it crashed. But if the stock went up another 10, 20 times, you'd be really upset. That's why I don't like investing in stocks that I can't see a future with because I don't know how long I should hold. I'm not saying this stock doesn't have a future. It's just hard for me to predict it. The stock started trading in 2019. That's why when we looked at the statement of cash flows, they had so much in capital stock in a trailing 12 months because that's from when they went public. The stock has been doing really well with COVID. A lot of people are stuck at home with not much to do, so some of them are gambling more. And some people who were not gambling before are now gambling because they're so bored. So it looks like the stock peaked in the mid 60s it did drop after that, but it's come back up. It's sitting in the low 50s. The stock has gone up 250% in the past 52 weeks, much better than S&P 500 of 18%. The low was 1060, the high was 64. The stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. And this is a pretty liquid stock. 11 to 19 million shares are traded each day. And of the 392 million shares outstanding, 331 million are on float. About 46% of the shares are held by institutions and about 4.5% of the shares are shorted. Their biggest shareholder is Shalom McKenzie at almost 6%. Then Vanguard, T. Rowe Price, TFCF Sports Enterprises, and Rain Ventures. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 11.2. The median is 14.5. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 48.6. So investors are paying about $49 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have negative $308 million of equity. Their tangible equity is negative 347 million because they have 39 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet, 4.7 million of goodwill, and 33 million of other. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income and negative equity, so we can't look at the ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 76 million of cash and 144 million of restricted cash. Restricted cash is cash that's set aside for a particular purpose. So the company may need to take on more debt or equity to run its business. They're still operating at a pretty big negative, but they did bring in $1.3 billion from their IPOs. So that should keep them going for another year or two without needing more debt. To summarize, I have them trading at a 54% premium. I ranked their free cash flows 3 out of 10. It was negative $300 million. But they are a growing company, so it's not too terrible. Revenue, I ranked 5 out of 10 because it was $423 million, which is not huge, but it's gone up 121% in the past 4 years. The ratios, I give them 1 out of 10. The services and brand, I give 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.